Vice President Calvino, thank you so much for joining us. There's so much to talk about. If you look at European growth and Spanish growth, what is the one thing that you will be focusing on in 2020 to make sure we're on an upward trend? Well, Spain has been growing above 2.5% as an average in the last five years. And we closed 2019 around 2% year on year. So it is one of the fastest growing countries in the EU. It is growing above the average of the Eurozone. And we want to keep it that way. Everybody agrees that there's a slowdown environment, so of course our growth rhythm will be a bit show slower than, than in the past years. But we want to continue to keep this growth and we want to pursue the same economic policy that has been successful for the past 19 months, which is fiscal discipline, social sensitivity and putting into place the structural reforms that Spain needs to have stronger, more dynamic, also more inclusive and sustainable growth. But if Spain, for example, overturns, overturns some of the labor reforms put in mm. place in previous years, what kind of message does that give to international mm. investors? Well, there is a wide agreement uh, in the Spanish society and, and social representatives that there are a number of areas which need to be adjusted because there have been abuses. Uh, we're talking about people being fired because they're sick, for example. You know, there are a number of um, issues which need to be addressed and I think that there's a, a broad agreement on what these issues are and how to do these adjustments without endangering the creation of jobs of course. So, so do you already have a specific you know it was a big labor reform mm -hmm. have you pinpointed exactly what you want to change? There is an, an ongoing discussion also between the representatives from the businessmen and the unions to see what issues need to be changed there will be a discussion also in Parliament between the different political groups there are some things that need to be tackled urgently because there have been abuses and then other issues that are going to be pursued in the in the course of the mandate. Um, I think that the, the main message that we want to send and actually has been our main message from day one has been one of dialogue. We want to also promote and, and support social dialogue. We want partners to come together to see well how to go about the minimum wage, how to go about labor market reforms, so as to make sure that these reforms have a very wide social majority in the country. Uh, Vice President of Treasury has also talked about issuing a green bond. Do we have any insight into how big that will be and the timing of it? Well, our, our, indeed, our, our target is to issue a green bond uh, uh, in the course of 2020. We will follow the path of our uh, National Development Bank, the Instituto de Crédito Oficial, which already tapped markets last year with uh, fi 500 million. It was very successful and we will follow that path. We are now seeing how to adjust it on the basis of the taxonomy of green investments, which has just been adopted and agreed at the European level. I think that actually this is one area where there are great opportunities if we manage to standardize and to have sufficient liquidity for these green bonds to, to flourish, you know, and, and to, to create a market. When will we standardize? I mean, this seems to be the number one issue. Are you disappointed that we haven't started standardized yet? I think this is a challenging area. We are breaking new ground. I think it is very good that the EU reached an agreement by the end of last year. That agreement can actually be, start to become the embryo of an international standard. And we want to lead the way. Um, we have to build on this basis. I think the broad consensus at the EU level about what is green and what isn't, because we need investors to be able to trust that when they invest in a green bond, it is a green bond and not something else. Uh, what's your take on, on US-China trade? And uh, we've heard of President Trump that was pretty tempered when talking about extra tariffs to Europe. Will that remain the case? I, uh, I think anything that is calming uh, down trade tensions is good news. So we have to be satisfied in the sense that we're going in the right direction and not in the wrong direction. Last time you and I met, actually, there were the threats One. were that the trade war was going to be heating up. I think that the fact that things seem to be calming down between these two superpowers is good news. Mm -hmm. And I also hope that the ongoing dialogue between the EU and the US is going to pursue a very constructive tone too. Vice President, thank you so much for your time.